My name is James Maskell. I'm the founder of the Evolution of Medicine, the host of the Functional Forum, and I'm also the founder of a new business called New Health. So I was definitely the weird kid at school that uh, was given all the natural health stuff. So I had a chiropractor and a homeopath. That was just the healthcare that I had growing up. And I didn't really realize that was weird or out of the ordinary until I showed up at school and realized no one really knew what a chiropractor was. Uh, my mother was so insistent that I not be given antibiotics. Um, I was the only kid in school that had to be called by the nurse ahead of being given antibiotics. And so my mum, with no medical credentials was able to sort of predict antibiotic resistance and the downside of overuse of antibiotics so 30 years before anyone else, which you know was kind of confusing as a child to understand how did my mum know and, and why was she doing it differently? But it was certainly something that sort of stayed on in my DNA until now doing economics at a good university there was sort of like a track that you went down which was to be either a corporate finance or a banker or you know management consultancy because it paid the most and that's just what people did and I guess I kind of got sucked into that for a while I started working on the biggest trading floor in the world and through a combination of circumstances one a mentor basically telling me that he felt like he'd wasted his life doing that and I should get out while I could and secondly really realizing that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and that possibly something in my my background could help me to solve what was a kind of an embarrassing problem for American medicine was just like the costs were going up significantly. The outcomes were, you know, not going up as quickly. It's in some cases starting to go down. And I just sort of had a, a sort of a moment of clarity that this was a problem that I was sort of uniquely, um, you know, built to, to deal with and that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and that I was learning really no relevant skills being in the bank for entrepreneurship. And so I went to work for my cousin who had been in the space um, of well, actually in the spa industry and in the spa industry, you know, they actually worked out uh, how to run a practice and a business way ahead of, um, you know, the current group of, of functional medicine. So I worked in this clinic in rural Georgia. So imagine me at 24 with an English accent showing up in rural Georgia. I, I was born in America, so I had the passport and I started working at a at a spa that was a the vision for it was a sort of a, a model for the future of primary care. So it was like integrated medicine delivered in a spa environment for baby boomers. And, um, you know, that taught me a hell of a lot. Uh, but it was a significant jump. I mean, there's not many people that make that kind of tr career transition. But the biggest thing that I saw is that I wanted to be at the bottom of a ladder that I actually wanted to climb and not just finding whichever ladder paid the most or whichever ladder was the most obvious. You know, I would say integrated medicine gen generally is, is doctors that integrate standard of care Western medicine with non-standard of care modalities. And there's a whole range. You have integrated dentistry, you have, in you know, there's all kinds of uh, models of it, but it's essentially if you're doing anything that's not standard of care and mixing it with whatever it is, then that's integrated medicine. And that's sort of like a big umbrella. Functional medicine is a very specific operating system for, for prioritizing integrated medicine. You know, the thing about integrated medicine is super valuable, but no one's doing it the same, right? Everyone's doing a slightly different version of it. They're integrating different modalities. If we suddenly realized that integrative or functional medicine was the way that we were going to solve chronic disease and we needed 100,000 doctors trained in it like tomorrow, what would we do? And all of the trainings that had come around was all about sort of learning from a guru, right? Someone who had done it really well, and then they would teach you like how they did it. But this guru and this guru didn't do the same thing. So when I found the Institute for Functional Medicine, I first heard Dr. Jeffrey Bland speak. I saw the matrix and the timeline and all the different pieces there. And I was like, look, this is something because everyone's learning it the same. And also it's prioritizing the integrated modalities. So, you know, you have a group of people that have type two diabetes. So for some people, it's a stress thing. For some people, it's a detox thing. For some people, it's a, you know, a food thing. How do you prioritize the different modalities for those different people, depending on what the cause is? Functional medicine had a great operating system for that. So we started the Functional Forum in um, 2014, uh, February 2014. It started off as a meetup group for doctors in New York who were interested in functional medicine. We then started taking like other types of practitioners, digital innovators, people doing stuff in health technology. And, um, you know, we started streaming it and ultimately it sort of became and it has become, you know, a, a sort of a, a significant monthly moment for 
not just the group in New York, but now 500 plus other meetup groups around the world who stream the show, watch the show, and have used the show as a basis for developing a local community of providers in, you know, all over the country and all over the world. We're in every, every continent. The bigger problem is in American medicine, like the, if you look at the dollars and cents spent on healthcare, the numbers are out of control in America and, you know, with the, um, you know, even now, like the first decline in life expectancy, never happened before, happening now in social economic, certain social economic groups in America. America is like, under, you know, completely irrationally worse than 50th in like infant mortality and all these things where they should be like in the top 10 but so you know aren't so there's a much bigger problem in america and also the thing that the reason why america has a lot going for it as far as the revolution and in, in this world is that one you know you have a greater sense of doctor entrepreneurship right what we what we're encouraging doctors to do is switch out of primary care family medicine and do functional medicine the propensity for a doctor to just hang their shingle doing something non-standard of care is much higher in America than the UK. So that's why I think functional medicine has grown really rapidly um, in, in America in the last few years, because it's not out of the realms of possibility that a doctor will start a private practice doing something else. In England, you have very, very few doctors who are privately uh, paid. And so there's just not the same... It's not just it's just not in the British psyche to to operate like that. So, you know, the combination of of the biggest problem to solve, you know, certainly, um, you know, certainly more doctors willing to do different things. And then the third thing I would say, which is something I found, like Americans tend to get behind leaders, right? We started this thing and everyone sort of got behind the movement, people starting meetup groups and doing it because they were like, yes, I feel the momentum. I'm doing it. I'm not sure if that's quite the same culturally in uh, in England or in Australia or anywhere with a real British culture. There's more of like a tall poppy syndrome where if you're doing something different, they're going to cut your head off. And so, you know, that's that's another piece. And I would say, you know, in America as well, because of the, the health insurance system, the way that it is, people are paying for medicine one way or another, right? Even if you go down the regular route between the co-pays and the insurance and the deductibles, you're making a cash payment somehow, somewhere. And so when it's cash versus cash, you know, pay, uh, consumers are very good at seeing value, finding value. They're doing it in every other industry all the time. In the UK, it's different because you're competing with free. But we also have a functional forum now in the UK that's held at the Royal Society of Medicine. And there's some really, really interesting stuff going on in the UK because the doctor who hosts the functional forum in the UK is this doctor called Dr. Rongan Chatterjee. And he's got a TV show, which is basically half Dr. Oz, half Super Nanny, where he lives in your house for like 30 to 60 days and reverses your chronic disease. And they've done two series and it's really transformational. Type 2 diabetes, cluster headaches, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, eczema, bang, 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 reversing all of them. They didn't know they were getting a functional medicine doctor, but they got one and the results have been amazing. And that show was primetime BBC One, so it went to five million people live and has now been sold to 90 countries. So it's a really great example. So I expect, even though UK has been a little bit behind in doctors doing it, we're very bullish on the future of the UK to adopt it. Also because the NHS could adopt it. You know, the NHS could just say, okay, we're gonna treat all type two diabetes with functional medicine or all colitis or Crohn's. They could just make that decision and it could happen. There's not that same thing in America where someone could just make a decision, you know, in that way. Guernsey is this tiny island uh, between England and France. Um, it's one of the Channel Islands. It's pretty much a tax haven. That's what it's known for. 60,000 person population. So a couple of years ago, I was asked to do uh, a TED talk, a TEDx talk for their event. And my, the subject of my talk was, what would it take to turn Guernsey into the sixth blue zone? Right, so blue zones are these five places around the world where people live consistently to 100 without the same amount of chronic disease that we see in, in these other countries. And so, um, you know, I did my talk there. And one of the people who witnessed that talk was a benefactor who decided to, um, you know, create an, a whole event dedicated to, you know, the, we called it the journey to 100. And so we brought over a bunch of speakers from the UK, from the US to really try and uh, inspire that community to try and leapfrog. I think currently they're like number eight or nine in the world. Their life expectancy is like 83. You've got Japan and Norway and Monaco that have about 89. So, you know, there's still quite a long way to go for everyone. And we just thought it would be an interesting story 
uh, to be able to look at what would it take to get Guernsey to be the first country past the post to life expectancy 100. And, you know, the goal is uh, to, you know, to start to see, is this a test bed where we could put a lot of these ideas that are being delivered in functional medicine practices across America and make it available for everyone. You know, some doctors don't want to be part of the conventional system, right? The pressure on a doctor, like you have the highest ever rate of doctor suicide. You have the highest ever rate of doctor burnout. Um, you have doctors leaving the profession. You have for the first time, like uh, families where there's multi-generations of doctors saying, don't be a doctor. So that's, you know, that's a real, that's a real issue. So I'm not sure if everyone wants to be in the system. You know, we've, we believe, you know, right from the beginning, uh, from the last four or five years, I've had as the footer on my email, a uh, Bucky Fuller quote, which is, you don't create change by fighting the existing reality. To create change, build the new system that makes the existing system obsolete. And that's been like sort of a guiding principle for us for the forum and the evolution of medicine, everything that we've done is that, you know, we believe that there is no more opportune moment than right now to build a new system that makes the existing system obsolete. You know, as far as how they can, they can operate, the first thing is they have to get good at the medicine, right? There's a learning curve because most doctors were not trained like this in medical school. The only way that you can become a functional medicine doctor at this exact moment is to also become an entrepreneur, right? To hang your shingle and do something different. What I see in the next five years and 10 years is that there'll be more and more opportunities for doctors to practice functional medicine as a job, right? Just getting a salary and doing it every day, not having to take the entrepreneurial risk that the first few doctors took. And then ultimately we're starting to see the first um, examples of now functional medicine being delivered in major medical institutions. So. The Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine was the earliest adopter. They got Dr. Mark Hyman there who sort of led that, but now it's a 18,000 square foot center and growing and amazing results. And now you're starting to see other hospitals and organizations saying, hey, what are those guys doing and why are they doing it? And starting to, you know, starting to do it. I, I think we'll see a big moment next May when we see the outcome studies from the Cleveland Clinic Center. And if those are as positive as the sort of interim studies have been, I think it's going to be sort of like an earthquake for, um, you know, for the community that we get better outcomes at lower cost with functional medicine for a range of chronic diseases. And that um, the demand then for functional medicine will go through the roof. Now, the Providence system in Seattle and Washington State is starting to get it. Um, they may be the next Cleveland Clinic as far as like investing in this. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's few and far between still. And, and one of the things that we've seen actually is the closure of many integrative centers. So there's been three major integrative centers that are closed in the last 18 months. And it's because, you know, unless there's an internal champion, like uh, Toby Cosgrove is the CEO of Cleveland Clinic. He's an internal champion for this thing. So he's the boss and he decides what's happening. And if they want an 18,000 square foot, it's going right in the middle of the center because he's the internal champion for it and he's got the power. Where in these other organizations, you know, when a, you know, when a, you know, financial guy looks at the numbers and goes, well, you're not making the same number of dollars per square feet in this set, this part than this part. Let's can that integrated stuff and do more heart stents. You know, that the money typically talks. And that's been the story in these other integrative centers. It doesn't make in as much money for the company. But, you know, medicine's shifting too. We're shifting towards, um, you know, fee for value instead of fee for service. And it's very, very, it's becoming more and more clear that functional medicine is valuable because it really empowers the patient to be part of their care. And that's, that doesn't cost anything. One of the organizations that we like is the Alliance for Natural Health. They have a newsletter and they take donations. It's a, it's a nonprofit, but they're advocating in Washington for the rights of people to choose different types of healthcare. It's so interesting that sort of at the same time as this is being proven to work better, there's obviously more and more attacks on it uh, at all the time. So they're doing amazing work there. But I would say the number one thing that anyone could do who wants to advocate for this type of medicine at this exact moment is to do it, is to be healthy. You know, what, what I hear all the time is that, you know, particularly with older people, is that when older people make a shift and start doing all the healthy behaviors, eating right, you know, meditating, all the stuff that, you know, they're being told, their friends and their other, you know, people in their circle see it 
and witness it and are like, hey, what are you doing? I want some of whatever you've got. And, you know, we, we're already seeing like the ripple effects of the peer to peer community. I think the first thing would be to get it right yourself. The second thing would be to find other people in your community who get it, too, because the, the power of peer to peer medicine is really, really exciting. And, um, you know, the future of chronic disease care is really in peer to peer because there's not enough medicine to go around. You know, we don't have millions more doctors hours to do it. We're seeing things like group visits and, you know, community based medicine to be super effective in, in getting health outcomes. So I'd say first is like put the oxygen mask before you take anyone else, you know, build communities of people that care about it. And then, you know, partner, find a local doctor who's into functional integrated medicine and see how you can help them to build and grow their practice, put them in touch with the evolution of medicine. I wrote a book, you know, really on this to see how can communities build around an integrated medicine center to really affect the health of those people. And it might be like local events to put on, you know, bringing people together. And there's lots of ways that you can do it. But ultimately, like connecting around a, a, a regular focal point like an integrative clinic can be a great way to do that. You know, the, the first three functional forums we didn't stream live. The first two, we didn't even have the idea. We didn't have the tech. The third one messed up. And on the fourth one, it actually worked. And on that event, that's where Mark Hyman announced the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine. And the number one thing that our community has been starving for is kind of real recognition from medicine that this is real, this is not weird, that they're not crazy for thinking that this is a, a good way to do medicine. So that was like a really amazing moment. The fact that it happened on the show and the fact that, you know, at that moment we had 3,000 doctors that watched that show as the fourth ever episode. And then we were like, oh, wow, this is really happening now. You know, one single slide that I saw earlier this year at a conference that I think will be, I predict, will be a dramatic um, inflection point that hasn't happened yet is this outcomes research from the Cleveland Clinic. And that showed in their interim research, they showed better outcomes at lower cost. And if you, if you look at the math equation, value in healthcare is outcomes divided by cost. So if you have better outcomes at lower cost, values is increasing. At the exact moment that medicine generally is shifting to a value-based model for its payment, is the exact moment that functional medicine is proving that it's better value. What I'm really excited about is to start to see, you know, this kind of movement hitting into lower socioeconomic groups, different socioeconomic groups listening to, when I hear doctors who have worked out a way to be able to treat those people at a cost that's reasonable, like through something like a group visit, um, or even like a virtual group visit, um, or just accountability and support groups, those are moments where I'm like, I think we just glimpsed the future of medicine. Yeah, so, you know, we've been involved for the last four years in building the number of doctors and allied health professionals that could deliver functional medicine. That's been a priority for us. And that's why, you know, we dramatically reduced the barriers for doctors to find out about it through the show. Like up until we came along, the only way you could really learn was to go to a conference that you had to pay for and fly to. Now there's hundreds of hours online of free education. You know, we did it and there's, there's other people that have been doing it too. So, you know, that, that the, but the goal was how do we 10X the number of doctors and the capacity of those doctors, you know, to be able to serve. So we've been doing that for a long time, but the goal has always been how do we then deliver that care to people in an affordable way? And so, you know, we're excited to be launching New Health. It's new with a K and, um, New Health is really all about affordable access to functional medicine. Up until now, you know, it's been something that has not really been available if you live in the middle of the country or otherwise, you know, there's not that many doctors around and because the demand and supply is so out of whack, doctors can charge a lot for their services. And so we've come out with, you know, we've been for the last two years really looking out to see which clinics are doing really innovative work and learning from them, but also really rethinking the whole process and redesigning medicine for lifestyle driven chronic disease. You know, we believe that functional medicine has to be the operating system. We believe that coaching is a significant part because behavior change is so important. We believe that technology is going to play a key role in making the whole thing cheaper and better and organized. And so, you know, we're redesigning um, medicine with that in mind. 
and uh, New Health um, is just launching now. We've been taking people through the pilot member to work on the system, and from the beginning of 2018, uh, we're going to be onboarding members into the system. So we're really excited. Initially, we want to work with just regular people who want access to this care, who have maybe not had access because it's been unaffordable or inaccessible for them. But down the road, we want to actually provide functional medicine for payers, insurance companies, um, businesses, and uh, particularly governments and sovereign nations. And I hope to go back to Guernsey next year and say, hey, let's do this thing.